upon and talk at this stage. Because it's it's not that scary. But I don't want to force you into anything. Okay, so. Um, and that's same for you, Caitlin. You don't have to do a demo, but if you're if you're open and um, uh, I'll, I'll get your permission afterwards if it's okay to share. Um, but basically, I want to I want to put together all of the what we've looked at so far uh, and demonstrate. Uh, how intrinsic memory is involved in the symptoms people present with us. Right. Yeah, you can. I've just got a multitude of, of traumas. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's uh, fertile ground, you could say. Oh gosh. <laughs> so it might be, it might be useful just to choose like a physical ailment, or what if you were to go and see uh, an acupuncturist, for example. Um, what yeah. would you give as your main symptom at the moment? Um, uh, and do you mind if I bring the cameras up? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You want the camera as well? Yeah, well, it's, I'm going to bring mine up, but it'd be nice to, uh, to look at. Okay. Yeah. Um, where am I? You look like a dog at the moment. Uh, yeah, I know a dingo actually. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Cool. Here I am. Awesome. Hi. So just just to explain, as as you go through, um, I might interrupt you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's not that you're doing anything wrong, saying anything wrong. It's just that um, I might want to just lead you or bring you back to another point. So if I interrupt yeah. you, is that okay to do that? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I'm here to learn. Cool. Um, okay, if I was going to see somebody, probably, I suppose my anxiety. I have anxiety issues. Okay. And that, that leads to panic attacks. Yeah. So, so when, um, when you get anxiety, where do you feel that in the body? Um, I sort of notice it in my breathing. Um, and um, so I think more in, in in my gut, it's sort of thing in in yeah yeah. So so where yeah. it in the gut? Uh, stomach, stomach area. Like I'm pretty deficient spleen and stomach, sort of. Anyway, so so is it in the um in this in so what your so what meridians are associated to that? To the area where you feel it, um, probably the kidney, um, more the kidney, the ren, uh, you know, just that 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 sort of centre, yeah, centre line, yeah. It's a kind yeah. of. So, can you explain that how it feels then? Um, I've got it down. <laughs> oh, <great>. Um, just. <laughs> sort of like a tightness there, there's like a tension yeah um yeah sort of in that epi, epigastric sort of area um yeah around around um ren 12 sort of okay. but extending out a little bit that's why i sort of incorporated the kidney and yeah sure and that so if you got it now then would you mind just uh just giving a little bit of attention to it by kind of just tuning into that area yeah, yeah. And just, yep. just, yeah, just stay with it just for a little minute, a few breaths. And then I'm going to ask you a question. And if something comes up, great. If nothing comes up, that's fine too. Yeah. So if that area in your REN12 space uh, could speak, what would it say? Uh, I think it's more primal than 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 yeah, yeah words yeah. wise. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. If you know what I mean. Um, I do know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's been that. So it's pre pre verbal. Yeah, yeah. 
And yeah. so can you also explain how the um, how the anxiety affects you in the world? How, how you feel about that? Um, it can limit it can limit me going out into the world. I'm happy for the world to sort of come in, yeah. um, um, come to me um, in that regard. Um, yeah, um, it's, um, I think that's the main thing and, and things branch off from that. You know, like I, I'm happy, um, I'm happy in my own little environment sort of thing and, and I'm happy for people to, to interact in my environment but like just sort of going out, um, you know, sort of, yeah, that's yeah. My world, my world has has become smaller because of it, sort of thing. Yeah, and how do you feel about that? Um, I live in Sydney, so there's a part of me that's happy with it, <laughs> in a way. Yeah. <laughs> I used to live in the Northern Rivers, so <laughs> before yeah. all of this happened, so um, yeah, but um. Yeah, uh, um, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to sort of, you know, sort of not have to, not have that as an underlying, you know, sort of um, cloud. I think to to um, to to contend with, you know. So yeah, so it's, it's restricting them. Would you say? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah, and it makes me tired. It makes me feel weary. It, it um, and I don't know whether that's that weariness comes from um, not not wanting to go out. Whether that's a symptom of 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 it as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, would you say that this is the the first time in your life that you've uh, been been inward and uh, um, um, wanting to pull in to life? Um, there have been other other times. Um, in some ways, they were attached with, with personal growth um, sort of thing. Um, you know, like I've, ha I've had some waves of it. Um, I think that um, things that have impacted upon me, um, like from 12 years ago, um, sort of led to a breaking, um, you know, that, 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 um, that I haven't fully rebounded from, Yeah. if you know what I mean, sort of thing. Um, yeah, like the, and like they're pretty, pretty life shattering sort of things. Yeah. that have happened so um and everything so yeah uh, it started with, with the death of my uh, my middle son and um from a motorbike accident so that sort of happened and then i had a workplace accident and dealing with work cover that's what actually really broke me then um and such so i have problems uh, um a trigger for my panic attacks is actually authority figures yeah so yeah so yeah welcome to my life <laughs> and thanks for sharing <laughs> so when um was there an authority figure in your uh parents uh yeah my mum was very authoritarian i was i was raised by her as a, as she was a single parent um and um yes yeah, she was quite authoritarian yeah um do you know much about the pregnancy when, when you were? Um, yeah, that was that. That's an interesting one um, because my mum was a single mother um, that chose to to keep me uh, rather than give me up for adoption, which was which was I'm thankful for. Um, so I wonder whether um, my mum didn't fall pregnant with me to try and get my father to marry her at the time so 
I'm looking, you know, like I, I, I've never discussed it with her, um, but looking back, um, you know, like I think that, um, you know, as I, as I was being cooked, so to speak, um, you know, there would have been a lot of grief, um, hormones and, and things like that. Um, I was probably smothered and overloved as a child because my mum had her own traumas of um, of um, abandonment, I suppose, when she was when she was growing up. So, yeah. you know, she overcompensated um, with that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that sort of was the foundation. Yeah. And then she was a nurse, and so I got over um, <laughs> overuse of antibiotics growing up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the tradition. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but if, yeah. Um, but if we look then at the, I think that was spot on what you said about that, um, there were the kind of no words to that feeling, and that, that suggests uh, uh, some, and it'd be great to talk to your mum about what she, what she experienced, you know, preconception what it was like for her going through the different stages of pregnancy and was there something really specific uh, that occurred. Um, and it's, it's sometimes useful just to get that cognitive connection that, oh, yeah, this happened and these things have gone through my life and there's a, there's a consistent theme that's, that's still running. Uh, and the genetic shadow for me is, is the impulse within us that's pushing into our life experience to help us uh, reconnect and remove those covers and veils that got put in. Yeah. But just yeah. if you wouldn't mind, just tuning back into your tummy. Yeah. And um, let me know how it feels. Uh, it feels a bit seedy at the moment um, in the stomach area. Um, and I'm needing to concentrate on my breathing, sort of thing. It's. Um, it can start to be caught up in the in the upper jaw area, sort of. Um, you, feel in, you feel it in the throat as well, yeah, at the moment. Um, yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, it's almost to the throat. Yeah. And that when I have a panic attack, it's quite interesting. It's almost like a um, a, a form of what they call dry drowning. Like my my windpipe just absolutely closes off. It just snaps shut. So I'm fighting for breath but then i also have a lot of nausea so when i do get a breath i'm actually coughing as well so um yeah so there's that fight fight going on um when i actually have a full-on panic attack did you have any bullying when you were younger uh yeah yes and uh, who did you tell about that um probably no one yeah. back at the time yeah and you yeah got, i was a bit of a different kid have you got a, do you have a uh, no i had th no i had three boys three boys and, and how old were you yeah. when you were being bullied um probably from even grade one right through in high to high school at times you know i just yeah sort of separated um myself from it so if you if your son went to school in grade one and was being bullied um who would you like him to talk to um um me it's interesting because there was an incidence of bullying with my youngest son and and it, it um it can set off a primal um killer reaction in me actually <laughs> So whilst he could come to me with it, I, I would I would then probably um, seek somebody that's that's more grounded, um, you know, like to to help tackle it because I think that I could be too emotional. It would it would just set off. It'd be like a red flag to a bull. Yeah. Type of thing. So it stimulates that first soul house, the safety and security aspect. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To to lay waste. <laughs> But if, yeah, but if he was like, if he was being bullied and he didn't come and talk to you, how would you explain that? Um, that'd be that that'd be really hard. Um, 
I'll, I'll, I'd, I'd have, I'd, I'd take some responsibility for that, 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 you know, I hadn't set up the, um, the environment that he could actually, that he could actually come to me to, to discuss it. And how, how do you think he might feel? What about not to, telling me about the bullying or? Yeah, if he, if um, he communicate, what do you think might be going on for him? Um, uh, he probably wouldn't want to want, want to burden me with it, I suppose. Um, and that. Um, yeah, it, it's. I don't know. I don't. I. I, I think. In many ways, with, with my kids, um, like I, I'd probably, I, I would have thought that I would have, I would have felt that something is going on and something's not right, you know. Um, but I'm just saying sort of thing because I'm like that. But if he was being bullied and he was unable mm. to talk to you, uh, what would be going on for him in that stage? How do you think he'd be feeling? I could feel almost suicidal, I suppose, if it was really bad. Um, you know, sort of, I mean, soul destroying, I know that that's, that's um, you know, like that, like that, that's something that's thrown around, but yeah, it, it would, yeah, it would be very, um, very primal, you know, like sort of, as to who you are, what are you doing here, and yeah, what's your purpose, type of thing. Yeah. As you were saying before, you know that 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 whole disconnect from from um, you know sort of yeah f from your purpose of being here. Yeah. And and with that, if you take it back to you as a young girl being bullied and not able to approach your mum, um, yeah. what do you think was going on there? Um, I think it was the case of mum was working, mum was, you know, long hours, like I, I like growing up, um, because mum was working, you know, they didn't have before or after school care or anything like that. So, um, often I'd be at somebody's place, you know, from seven o'clock in the morning and, you know, a couple of times, um, you know, mum had a second job, you know, so I'd be at somebody's house as the extra child of that family, um, you know, until sort of sometimes eight, nine o'clock at night type of thing. Yeah. yeah okay. um, and you didn't want to burden your mum? No, no. Which, which no. implies that you were the parent? Yeah, maybe, yeah. And that no one had you yeah. back? There was no protection. You couldn't go. Yeah, to no, I didn't. I, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was nobody. There was no um, auntie or or anything like that. Even sort of sort of thing. So it's it's possible yeah. that anxiety is is your little girl inside saying, "I'm really scared. No one's got my back here, and I'm I'm really frightened." And uh, the thing that happens now is that you're uh, uh, a wizened adult um, you can separate the child from your adult part and you can bring your adult in to support that little girl so anytime yeah. anytime you get anxious you don't need to shift it or change it uh, you just give it some attention because yeah. it's, it's the attention that you needed as a child uh, and you know your mum's circumstances made her not present stressed out unavailable uh, needing you to support her emotional needs and and the child wears all of that yeah yeah and, and i see sure. it all the time the patterns of the early life experience come through in the physical symptoms that we get yeah and, and the way yeah. to and are you okay because it's pretty heavy what i just took you through so yeah are you all right yeah, no, no, it's it, it's it's enlightening. It's which is really which is really great. And and actually, 
now I sort of think of my own kids. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm glad I got a grandchild. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can fix them. <laughs> Well, I can be attentive. I can tune in, you know. Like I was unable really when I was a farmer to. I kind of just yeah. Do, do off in other things, you know. Just I mean, I love my kids and I, and they love me too, but I was kind of you know distracted. Yeah, yeah. I, I think maybe that's one of the major importance um, in 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 you know things that are really important about grandparents because i know that my mum was actually there for my kids you know um yeah. in many ways that she wasn't there for me probably because she has more time and and going through things with you know just now with with you with you you know has made me sort of think oh my gosh with my own kids but then you know like i'm there for my grandkids yeah. you know sort of yeah um sort of thing yeah. so yeah just tune back into your tummy for a minute yeah just if you can explain how it feels it feels a bit better actually it feels yeah it's it's not as it's not as up in my chest as as it was you know like and and that nausea feeling is sort of lessened and yeah. that i feel interesting like I, I feel that i can breathe a little bit better just even yeah. yeah, just being conscious of of that. And that, and that's the beauty, you know, with our clients. When if we just connect, if we start to, and the, and the, the the process is, what symptoms have you got, and how does that make you feel in your life? And then they give you the yeah. answer. Yeah. And then all you got to do is connect, yeah. connect what they give you, back to an early life situation, give them a cognitive. Oh yeah, that's that's a continuing pattern, and that doesn't fix it. Yeah. You know, when people try to just do it through the mind, it doesn't fix it. But as soon as we no. pay attention to the body, that's that's where the yeah. release comes, and that release is yeah. uh, up the mountain water. That's where we're releasing from the stream level, yeah, and that flows right. all the way yeah. to the sea. So it has an opening effect into the whole of a person's life, and it's minute and small, but it's it comes from a really solid base. Yeah. Yeah. And and they like yeah, no it's it yeah yeah no it's 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 really interesting because when I started having panic attacks you know how everybody around you they tell you to you know just take a deep breath just breathe and like your body's doing something completely you know completely different to to what you you're wanting it to do yeah. and and prior to that I had had you know like I had um you know been doing some self-development and you know sort of years prior and and things and it made me start to question you know like sort of you know when your body can actually all of a sudden sort of go no nah, i'm doing you know this is what's happening um you know you um you really question the whole self-development thing you know uh well i did anyway you yeah. know sort of why, why aren't i better and feeling okay now yeah, why, exactly why exactly when when thought can yeah. take over from your you know th when thought rules all you know? and self-development kind of you know if we knew when we began that self-development actually takes you in and down and in and down is yeah. in the dark and dungeons you know that's that's where all the things we've been yeah. trying to avoid most of our life live uh yeah might people might not get into it so so uh, easily <laughs> But it, on the other end of it is that beautiful authenticity that starts to come out, you know, and uh, uh, that's, yeah. that's the role. And acupuncture, the history of this is deja vu as well, which is interesting. So that um, the, the the depth and understanding wisdom in Chinese medicine, especially from the the fire spirit aspect, is is something we that we have as practitioners to give to the world, you know. And we've kind of got dragged into China. Uh, be be enough through a scientific point of view for acceptance but that's coming from the yeah. child perspective we're not children you know we're actually superior uh in our intentions and our leadership qualities and that's that's what i'm interested in bringing out into the world is yeah the depth that we got in chinese medicine but definitely just to conclude then so when symptoms come up instead of 
uh, all of the deep breathing techniques to try and avoid anxiety. If you imagine that's a little child, you come up to your mum and your mum says, I'll go and do that. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, so yeah. it's just, just tune in, don't change it, just be with it, uh, give it a little bit of attention, even when it feels bad. If you have to go and self-medicate, and you know you, you do, and you just accept that as well, yeah. that's just that attention is enough to start to shift the patterns. And also, I can see yeah. the, the pericard looking at the pericardium for you because uh, of that really core level of uh, lack of safety. Um, and don't yeah. do it too often. Maybe just if you treat yourself, just maybe use one or two points and um, uh, and then leave it for two or three weeks. Allow the body to integrate that that change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank cool. you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. That was great. All right. So what have we got left? I wonder if anyone else is here. You think we got Lenny and HC. I don't know. Lenny hasn't got a camera, so anyway, it's lovely. To, I'm not taking the piss out of your HC and Lenny. It's lovely to have you here. It was just I like talking to people, so I'm, <laughs> I'm missing your interaction. Um, uh, let's just have a look at the what we got. So that was a water demo. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, and I guess just to summarize that then, uh, if I haven't done it already, so start to um, get curious with your clients. Yeah, so it's, a, it's an expanding creative kind of principle um, where you, you find out, okay, when you have that sore shoulder or your sore neck, um, you know, how do you feel? And someone say, oh, I can't even look around the back to see where I am in the car. It's bloody dangerous. And uh, it's pissing me off about it all my life. And so when people start to talk like that, see if you can tune in and get uh, kind of like the essence of the feel of what the restriction is, what the limitation is. Um, and then track it back. How far does it go back? Because once you can identify the limitation, that the person will say, oh, no, it's not the first time it's ever happened in my life. And then you say, well, when was the first time? Well, how far does it go back? And then they can start to track it back. And then they have the potential to realize that, hey, this is not a present situation that's bothering me. This is actually a pattern, belief, and structure that's come through and is being triggered by my present response. And the fact that I just automatically go into a behavior uh, tells us that's the child aspect. And then we can start to bring in the adult uh, to support that and, um, and look at, uh, flexible response to a situation rather than a reactive instinctual uh, behavior. Um, 